Hey everyone, today I'm going to be going over the updated Tiger Boss solo. It's been a few months since I released the original one, and that one's a little bit outdated now. There's been a lot of new optimizations that have been discovered, some just by me, some by other people. But I'm going to be going over all of those today. I'm delisting the old video because it's just out of date now. There's a lot better ways to do some of this stuff that have been discovered. So the first major change that I've made is that I just do this in whatever spec I happen to be at the time. I don't respec for this anymore. In the old video, I showed a spec that had InfoSOR, Ardent Defender, and Shield spec, but that spec really isn't necessary. And other specs, like Sankora specs, can make the axe thrower portion of this run much, much easier too. So I recommend just being a Sankora spec for this, and really you can just do it in whatever spec you happen to be at the time. That's what I do. As far as your gear, you're going to want a really high spell power set, and you're going to want to also bring a really high passive avoidance set. So we use the high spell power set for the axe thrower part of the run, and we just want to burn those guys down as quick as we can, so that's what we use that for. The passive avoidance set, we use that for actually killing the tiger boss himself. He is considered a boss mob, so boss mobs are always going to be three levels higher than your character level. So even though this is a level 60 raid, he is still considered a level 73 mob if you are level 70. So... As far as avoidance, I go for 95 to 102.4% total avoidance, somewhere in that range. I've used quite a few different sets for this, but I've always done it within that range. And for shield block, I've done it anywhere from 300 to 450 shield block. Anything in that range should work for you. You may need to use a little bit of seal of light and or judgment of light depending on what your gear looks like, but you should be able to do this in even pretty undergeared sets. Just be a little more cautious and use some more Judgment of Light, Seal of Light to help heal you up and bridge the gap between your figuring of the Colossus cooldowns. If you aggro any mobs on your way to the Tiger area, you can just jump up in this little ledge reset spot here. You're going to use this spot quite a bit throughout this run, so you'll become very familiar with it. But anytime you need to get rid of some mobs that you don't want aggroed on you, just hop up on there. For the first part of the run, we're going to use our high spell power set. And when you first enter the room, you're going to see a lot of Tiger Cubs running around. They aren't linked to any of the packs. You just gotta make sure they're not like right next to the packs or they can pull them but as long as they're slightly far away from the packs you can pull them and you want to grab all the ones that are in the middle and also the ones on the right side and when they get low on hp they will try to run away and aggro more packs so make sure you have like judgment of righteousness hammer of wrath hammer of justice just something ready so that you can kill them before they go aggro more stuff. Next is the Axe Thrower pull. This is generally considered to be the hardest part of this run. They have a channeled ability, it's 10 seconds long, and it deals damage and it'll stun you for 2 seconds. There's 3 of these guys in this pull, so they can very easily just chain stun you to death. So that's what we're trying to avoid here. Our main goal is to DPS one of them down as quickly as we can. If you're an engineer, you can mind control one of these axe thurs too to help assist you in burning down your kill target. If you do choose to do that, I would MC the middle one and then have him help you out on your focus target. Make sure you use his enrage buff. And when MC is about to break, I would also use the axe flurry too just to put it on cooldown so he can't use it against you when MC breaks. So before we pull, we want to get Seal of the Crusader up so that we're able to judge Crusader on our kill target really quick. And we want to pre-proc Tome of Fiery Redemption if you have that. What you can do is you just spam Sense Undead with the trinket on and when it procs, just change to a different trinket. This will let you keep the buff and you can have a different trinket on. You'll get a little extra spell power that way. Once you're ready to pull, get Judgment of the Crusader on your kill target and just start burning them down as quickly as you can. You're going to want to try to keep the other two Axe Thurs at max range if you can. 
That way you can just step back a little bit to get out of their Axe Flurry range when they start casting it. This will just give you a little extra time. If you're more geared, this doesn't matter a ton, but if you're a little less geared, the extra seconds this might save you before you have to bubble could help you quite a bit with getting this pack down. After about 6 or 7 seconds, I would use Hammer of Justice on your kill target. This will just buy you a little extra time, prolong your kill target's Axe Flurry. Once you do start getting hit by an Axe Flurry, whether it's the further away ones and you just didn't get out of the way in time, or if it's the close one, your kill target, whatever it is, just pop your Divine Shield as soon as you start getting stunned and keep burning down your kill target. Now, once the first one's dead, this is a new change I've made. I don't reset here anymore. I actually go over to these ruins and I use them to LOS the other two axe throwers. So I can just kill them and anytime they use axe flurry, I just sidestep around the corner, LOS, hide until they stop casting. One thing you need to make sure to do when you're getting out of line of sight of these axe throwers is turn up your auto attack. If you auto attack them through the wall, they're going to be able to hit you with axe flurry through the wall too. So definitely turn off your auto attack as you're getting out of line of sight. Make sure that doesn't happen. While you're fighting these two over here, your forbearance is going to wear off. So you have two options. You can Avenging Wrath to kill them a little bit quicker or... If you want to be a little more cautious, you can save it for Bop. In case you do take an Axe Flurry, when they chain them on you, that's when you can die here. So you can cast your Bop while you're stunned. So if you do happen to take a bad Axe Flurry here and you're at risk of dying, you can just Bop yourself. You can also bandage during that time too if you want to. Now we're on to the tiger boss himself, so throw on your high passive avoidance set, and you can also use some consumes to boost your avoidance too, like elixir of major agility or warp burgers. The first thing we need to do is to skip phase one. We can do this by doing three full resets of the tiger boss, and on the third reset he'll just inexplicably despawn Zath and Lorcan and go straight into phase two. Each full reset has two parts to it. Part one is where you just pull the pack, go to the entrance to the starting area, wait for everything to group up there, and once everything's grouped up, just step out of the room and everything will reset, run back to its position. This part is kind of the key to all of this, so we're going to run back to the platform, we're going to stand just below the stairs that lead up to where Tiger Boss is, and we want... Lorcon and Zath to aggro us before the two Tiger Ads get back into their starting positions. This is going to desync the pack, and this is exactly what we're looking for. So just stand there. Lorcon and Zath should aggro you. Sometimes they are a little bit delayed on their aggroing, and the Tigers will actually reach their starting positions before they aggro. So if that happens, you just got to repeat this. It Usually doesn't happen, but sometimes it does, so just be aware of that. Then we're just going to run back to the entrance to the tiger area again once we've re aggroed them here. This is part two. So in part two, we're just doing the same thing we just did, except you don't have to wait for everything to get all the way down there and grouped up at the entrance. I have found that if you just run straight out and Lurkon and Zath are super far away, sometimes it'll bug out and they won't actually re-aggro you in this next part. So I like to let them get pretty close before I take the call out of the room and have them reset. But once you take them out of the room and reset, Lurkon and Zath and then the Tiger Boss should all re-aggro you as they're in the middle of their reset. When they do this, just run over to the ledge and we're going to wait a little bit here for all of them to group up. When we're on the ledge, there are some opportunities here to kind of speed up these resets. On this ledge, after a certain amount of time, the mobs will evade and just reset. Just make sure you're spamming your mount the whole time you're waiting for the reset to happen because you'll actually be able to beat the pack back to the starting position and you'll be able to pull Lorcan and Zath before the Tigers 
reach their starting position, which will allow you to skip part one of a full reset. So if that happens, then you'll pull them, you'll go back to the entrance to the tiger area, and you'll do your desync reset. Sometimes the call will re-aggro you, like right after he resets, and this will actually count as one of your uh, full resets. So we can really speed things up by getting this. So I've found this happens a little more often if you're really, really close to him, like as close as you can be without him hitting you. Or you can also try to just time using an ability on him, like around the time you think he's going to reset, and that'll sometimes make him reset, then immediately re you again. If you can get this to work, it's really great because it counts as one of your full resets and takes a lot less time than doing an actual full reset. So just keep doing this until you've gotten three full resets, and then you'll be straight into phase two. This is where we have another new change. You can actually prevent the bleed debuff by just using some different positioning. The first person I saw doing this was Vanderex. I'll have a link to his channel in the description. He makes a lot of really great prop alley farming content, so go check him out. So basically what you do, you bring the tiger boss over to the wall here. You're going to stutter step back pedal along the wall until you reach this part by the cage. It'll just prevent you from moving any further. That's when you know you're in the right spot. When you're in this spot, he's not going to be able to use the bleed debuff on you. The theory is that he's in range to melee you, but he's out of range to actually use his bleed on you. So... Just hang out in this spot. You won't get the bleed debuff ever. Sometimes he will just kind of charge forward into you when you're first getting into position. If he does do that, just run out of the spot and slowly get back into it again, and it should be fixed, no problem. So now we're just killing the tire boss. I either use Judgment of the Crusader and spam mana pots, or if I don't want to spam mana pots, then I just put up Judgment of Wisdom and just keep in Seal of Righteousness on the entire time if we can. I save Figuring of the Colossus until I'm at about 2,000 HP. By this time, hopefully a lot of Tigers will have spawned and you'll actually get a ton of value out of it. Then for any cooldowns after that, if you're getting low on HP, you can use Judgment of Light or Seal of Light if you need to, just to kind of bridge the gap between those cooldowns. Once he gets pretty low HP, like 35-40%, I start pooling my mana, and I save it for 20%. When he gets to 20%, he's going to enrage. It's really not too big of a deal, but at this point, You'll have another Avenging Wrath up, and this is where I pop Avenging Wrath, dump all my mana, try to kill him. At the same time, you'll probably kill most of the Tigers too. It kind of depends on the timing. Sometimes they'll summon two more like right before he dies, but ideally you'll kill all the Tigers about the same time you kill him. And if you don't kill all the tigers at the same time you kill him. Something you can do, you can just loot him, and then you can jump up on the ledge and just hearth out if you want to, save a little bit of time. So that's the whole run right there. This runs about 20 minutes or less once you get it down. Thank you guys for watching, and good luck on your tigers.